you know, we're going to be talking about uh, Warren Buffett, kind of him eating crow uh, with regards to kind of his comments and his stance on Bitcoin and how it has been lately. So the billionaire investor Warren Buffett, he spoke to CNBC recently and he explained how his investment firm Berkshire Hathaway is having trouble finding attractive investments with the COVID-19 pandemic sparing no one uh, in the economy right now. There's just nothing really attractive to sink money into. Of course, we reported how at the Berkshire Hathaway convention or dinner or whatever you want to call it, uh, that he said publicly that uh, there isn't, you know, that the market hasn't dipped far enough to make uh, injecting cash uh, attractive. And of course, many uh, have taken notice of Buffett's comments. Um, and even professional investors like Dan Moorhead from Pantera Capital thinks that he should seriously reconsider his position on Bitcoin and look at Bitcoin as what it is, which is the opportunity of a lifetime. Right now, Bitcoin, you know, Buffett and Bitcoin have a kind of storied history. He talked about it uh, being a rat poison squared uh, back in uh, February. He commented again on Bitcoin, saying that it has no value and it just happens to be way up for the year. You know, currently 38 percent since the start of 2020, by the way, and the only asset in the world that has significantly recovered since February. Meanwhile, if we look to the S&P 500 index, which is comprised of large United States stocks, which Buffett routinely endorses for amateur investors, it's down 12%, right? And if we look to Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett's insurance to utilities conglomerate and investment vehicle, well, its shares are down 21% so far just in 2020. But Bitcoin, Bitcoin's just up randomly. Right? It's just randomly up, right? It's outperforming the entire market just, you know, just because, right? Just, you know, just happens, man. It's random, right? Now, uh, Dan Moorhead of Pantera Capital, he was formerly a Goldman Sachs mortgage bond trader, and he went on to oversee the Forex options at Deutsche Bank in London. Uh, he later he later joined the hedge fund Tiger Management, pretty famous hedge fund, before he started his current venture, which is Pantera Capital in 2013. And he really was focused and has excelled at forming a Bitcoin investment firm. That's what Pantera Capital is designed to be and do. Now, Moorhead, he wrote in his monthly newsletter, which was published last week, and he echoed Buffett's sentiment that there is little to be positive about in regards to the global economic outlook. And he described the current times as extremely distressing and massively confusing right now for everybody, especially investors, right? He says that the only thing that is clear right now in the markets is that this pandemic is going to have a devastating toll on the economy with a strong chance that things are going to get worse before they get better, meaning government deficits will get out of control and it will be accompanied by reckless money printing on top of the fact that we can infer that the market is going to have another meltdown or a significant trend to the downside or dip lower. Now, Moorhead believes all of this bodes well for Bitcoin, particularly when you consider May's upcoming, or you know, just in a few days, the halving event, when the network block reward is going to get cut in half. He feels that Bitcoin is cementing its status as a bulwark against inflation, which is what, excuse me, which is what it was designed to do. Or, you know, really, as he put it, the actions of the central banks right now amount to hydrostatic pressure. The flood of new money will lift all boats. But he strongly believes the situation will inevitably be a very positive result for prices in cryptocurrency land. Now, from the Wall Street Journal, you know, the economic doom and gloom forecast that we see does still remain very stark. According to the WSJ, an economic report that was due on Friday today is going to reveal that the U.S. unemployment rate has risen to 16% back in April, which would represent a record high in data going all the way back to 1948, right? And according to Politico, some estimates even put the jobless rate as high as 22%, which is croaching on the Great Depression numbers of 25%. And of course, keep in mind that we've gotten better at record keeping, or perhaps worse, depends on how you want to argue about it. You know, is it a pandemic or a plandemic? Uh, <laughs> So uh, it's, it's very, very difficult. All we know is that this is terrible. This is tragic. So many humans are hurting right now. So many people are going to be hurt. And this is not something that we're going to bounce back from. It's not going to happen. Earlier this week on Monday, the Treasury Department stated that it plans to borrow up to $3 trillion this quarter 
right? Which would mark a six-fold increase over all that they borrowed in Q1, right? All to ostensibly fund COVID-related emergency spending, i.e. stimulus. So at Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholder meeting that took place last Saturday, the billionaire investor warned his clients of the potential extreme consequences that are going to result from the Fed's decision to continue to prop up corporate debt, right? Saying that right now America is doing things that we do not know the ultimate outcome to, all right? We do not, like government and the central banks do not know what they're doing. Right. Other outlets like the New York Times attempted to soften the blow by saying that Buffett is neither optimistic or pessimistic, but merely realistic. Right. I think that's uh, uh, they're trying to soothe market fears. I don't know why. These days, though, it does seem as though cryptocurrency investors are more in touch with reality because we're warning about the government's runaway monetary policy, fiscal stimulus. And that it's their printing that is driving the force behind the economy and markets, right? At, you know, at least ARCA Funds agrees with me, right? They are a cryptocurrency focused investment firm, and they were speaking similar talking points uh, concerning the debasement of fiat currency. And they happily point out that so far in 2020, the cryptocurrency markets are on the right side of history, while traditional markets continue to struggle because of what is going on. Right. And as they put it, if your entire investment thesis for owning stocks and bonds requires this much government intervention just to survive, shouldn't every debt and equity investor at least be willing to listen to an alternative proposition? Now, in all fairness to Buffett, he claims that his firm is looking for a special investment opportunity and that it has 30 to 50 billion dollars allocated to such a special case. So this is how this is how they do things. Now, that may be a little too much to go all in on Bitcoin with. You know, after all, Bitcoin's entire outstanding market value is barely, well, it's about $266 billion right now. As of right now, a $50 billion purchase would surely send prices skyrocketing. Come on, Buffett, hit that market buy button. But, you know, maybe Buffett should be considering even a little exposure to the latest and greatest class of alternative assets. But as Buffett told CNBC interviewer, Becky Quick, uh, a few months ago, during his February appearance on Squawk Box, he didn't own any cryptocurrency, and he emphasized how he never will. So Buffett may be overlooking the opportunity of a lifetime. There is, after all, a growing body of investors who see Bitcoin as a promising investment during the current depressing financial times that we're in. You know, the block crypto recently reported on the Wall Street firm Jefferies and how its global head of equities, Chris Wood, strongly recommended Bitcoin just last week to their investors, saying investors should be looking to buy Bitcoin before the upcoming halving. Now, earlier this week, the London based investment firm ID Theory included a chart in their analysis showing how dramatically money managers have turned their portfolios around thanks to their bets placed on Bitcoin futures. That is what saved them this year. But, you know, going back to Dan Moorhead, Pantera, he also wrote a pretty frothy price prediction on Bitcoin in his newsletter published last week, describing Bitcoin prices climbing as high as $115,000 by 2021, marking a tenfold increase relative to where we are now in the market. Yes, it can happen. Now, Buffett shareholders might be left drooling over the prospects of such returns, but instead they're being told to sit on their hands and let Berkshire ride out the storm while they find their next unicorn. Or as Dan put it, if you can find something that goes up during the course of the biggest crisis in a century, you should have some of that in your portfolio. And this is only the beginning of Bitcoin's historic run up. You know, according to the New York Times, Buffett did try to wrap up Saturday's investment meeting on a positive note, saying that he left investors with a sliver of hope when he referred to the quote, American miracle, unquote. You know, the premise that the American spirit has always prevailed and it will do so again. And there is, listen, there's a lot of beauty to that. There's a lot of beauty to that. But based on the current prognostications of cryptocurrency investors who so far this year have been proven right time after time, thanks to Bitcoin's sharp rebound from the March meltdown, 
that miracle and American spirit might be coming not from the government, but from the entrepreneurs who are currently working to develop alternatives to the current financial and monetary mess we find ourselves in. And the fruit of their imagination will include innovations and inventions such as improvements to Bitcoin and the rise of other digital asset solutions, not the resurrection or the saving of a broken and destructive fiscal and monetary system. If you want to see the American spirit, it's in what we're going to do with Bitcoin. I believe that. So let me know what you guys think. Obviously a big topic. It's heartbreaking almost to see people on the sidelines and being advised by their asset managers, by their market analysts, by their professional investment firms that, well, we just need to wait for the stock market to recover. What if it doesn't? It is such common knowledge that a buy and hold strategy is the best strategy out there, that a long only strategy is the best bias to have. Your data only goes back a century. Now that's a long time, but you are, I think, naive and blind if you think that the stock market must just recover. Companies can be individually healthy, and I think that investment in companies and corporations is a good idea. The corporate structure is successful and does work. It is a sign of a free and open economy. So corporations aren't bad. Stocks are good. Uh, the entire concept of stocks are good. But government control of a centralized and usurious monetary system is not. And because the underlying stock valuations are derived from that fiscal system, we are in for a world of hurt. And again, if you want to see where the world is going, you're on the right channel.